Hey everyone, Sam from 3D. In this video I would like to show you how to animate a walk cycle. But first let me introduce you to 3D.design, your gateway to a world of captivating 3D character models, icons and more. Dive into our extensive library boasting artists, avatars, sleek cars and diverse file formats compatible with tools like After Effects. Start with creative journey here for an immersive experience, alright let's begin with the video. Before I start creating the animation, I'll do a few preparatory steps. First, I'll switch the model display in the viewport to flat, and add shadow and cavity to make the different parts of the model more distinguishable. Next, I'll select the rig and switch to pose mode. I'll open the sidebar with the rig settings. Right now it is set that the head and neck bone moves behind the whole body. I'll disable this by setting these parameters to zero, so that when walking, the head and neck are more static and don't repeat the body's motion. The arm bones have inverse kinematics, therefore the arms remain in place and the body moves. Inverse kinematics is more suitable in cases where the hands interact with other objects or the character rests his hands on some surface. And in the case of walking, forward kinematics is more suitable when the hands follow the body movement. I will set these parameters to want to switch to forward kinematics. Right now, the arms are moving along with the body. I need to enable the bone controller's forward kinematics. To do this, I will turn on the FK layer in the rig settings. I will select any of the bones that appear. The dot indicates the layers that contain these bones. I'll turn on their visibility. And I'll disable the FK layer again, so that the extra bones don't get in the way. I'll disable the layers with the bones of the inverse hand kinematics. I will also disable the visibility of layers with unnecessary bones, so that they do not interfere with the animation. Leg bones, unlike arm bones on the contrary, should be with inverse kinematics to ensure that they remain on the ground and do not move after the body. I will also hide the layers with these bones, because we will not animate them. In the output settings, I have the FPS set to 25. To avoid inserting keyframes for each bone separately, I activate this button. This is automatic insertion of keyframes. Right now, pressing the iHotkey inserts keyframes for all parameters. I will only animate the position and rotation of the bones. So, in the keying tab of the active keying set, I will set location and rotation. By default, keyframes are inserted with Bezier interpolation. This means that the motion between keyframes will be smooth. Now I will only need motion on the keyframes. So, in the settings under the animation tab, I will set the default to constant interpolation. Now there will be no animation between keyframes. This will allow us to not get distracted by unnecessary movements and see only the key phases of the walk. The gate animation consists of several key phases. The first phase is contact. In this phase, the forward foot makes heel contact with the ground. The opposite arm to the contact leg is in front. The character is in a mid-height position. In the down phase, the character's body is at its lowest point. The front foot makes full contact with the ground. The rear leg is coming off the ground. The arms are tending toward the center. In the passing phase, the body rises, the leg that was behind is carried forward. The supporting leg shifts back. The arms are almost level at the center. In the up phase, the legs change, the supporting leg is now at the back. The body is in the up position. The arms also change position following the legs. The next phase of contact repeats the first phase, but is its mirror image. Everything is the same, but the character is leaning on the opposite leg. And then all the phases are repeated, but mirrored. We need to create the first four phases and then just copy them, mirroring them. I'm going to start creating the animation inside projection. First, I'll place markers to indicate where on the timeline the phases will be located. To rename a marker, I'll hover over the marker area and press F2. I will choose 3 frames as the distance between the phases. This is the average walking speed. In output, I will limit the workspace to 24 frames. Moving the bones, I'll start to set up the first pose. I'll turn the character's pelvis following the lead leg. I'll also rotate the shoulder girdle in the direction of the arms. I'll continue to bring the character into the pose. When moving back and forth, the arms should move in an arc trajectory. So in front and behind, I'll deploy them closer to the center. And then in the middle pose, I'm going to place them further away from the center.
I've set up the first pose. I'll select all the bones and insert keyframes for all of them, so that when animating on the next frames in the first phase, this exact position of the bones will be fixed. I'll put the character in the next pose. In this phase, the front leg is in full contact with the ground. To cancel the rotation of this bone, I'll press Alt-R. The back leg should come off the ground. Here I'll deploy the arms further away from the body and shift them closer to the center. I'll see how the character moves now. I'll adjust the second position a bit to make the movement more natural. I haven't turned off the FK visibility of the leg bones, so I'll do that now so they don't get in the way. I'll insert keyframes for all the bones in the next phase, and I'll put the character in a carry-through pose. The front leg shifts backwards not off the ground. I'll move the body forward and higher. The back leg moves forward. And the pelvis and shoulder girdle, I will cancel the pivot so that they are in the middle position. The arms should be almost level here and be more turned away from the body than in the other phases. I will check how the character moves from phase to phase. Animating the next phase. Here the arms and legs will change position and the body will be maximally up. To view the animated area, I will use hotkey P and highlight the area with keyframes on the timeline. Right now, I have the number of FPS displayed in red in the text information. This means that there is not enough power for real-time playback. In the playback tab, you can set frame dropping. The animation speed will be maintained, but intermediate frames will be lost. I'll select all the bones and insert keyframes for them. The next phase is a mirror image of the first. I just need to select summary keyframe on the first phase to select all these keyframes. Copy it, Ctrl C, paste this pose mirrored. You can use the hotkeys Shift, Ctrl V. The pose now mirrors the initial pose. Next, I need to select all the keyframes on the timeline, copy them, and paste them mirrored. The pose in the first phase and the last phase should repeat. Right now, when I play the animation, there is a slight stoppage when going from the last to the first keyframe. To fix this, I need to shrink the timeline workspace by one frame. I'm going to select all the bones now. In the timeline area, I'll select all channels by pressing the hold key. I'll switch the timeline window to the dope sheet window. In the channel tab, I'll select clean channel. This will remove keyframes from channels that have no changes. On channels that have one keyframe left, I'll delete it. To make the animation smooth, I'll select all keyframes, press the T hot key and select Bezier interpolation. If you don't have enough computer power, you can check the simplify box in the scene settings. This disables model anti-aliasing and the animation is played back in real time. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing and giving it a big thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.